right, now I'm going to do an example of a confidence interval. I'm going to make a few different confidence intervals. I'm going to make a 95, a 96, a 98, and a 99.9% .9 confidence interval. But they're all pretty much the same. We just, the difference is, remember, when we make a confidence interval, the more um, confident we want to be, the larger um, the net we need. So we got to use a larger net. So I'll do a 90, well, we already did 95, so let's do a 90, and then a 96, a 98, and a 99.9. Okay, so first off, what is, how do we find the confidence interval? The good thing is your formula sheet tells you exactly what you have to do for all confidence intervals. And this is what your formula sheet says. It tells you to make a confidence interval, you do the following. You take your statistic, whatever it is, your p hat or your x bar, you take your statistic and you add and subtract some margin of error, which is basically a critical z, some critical or critical t, times your standard deviation. This product right here is called your margin of error. And I tell my students, and you can do it too on your formula sheet, as a little helper, right when you get your formula sheet, right where it says stat plus or minus crit times SD, write ME. Because your margin of error is your critical Z times your standard de deviation of statistic, which is a standard error. So in this case, we're using a P hat. So I know that I'm going to take my P hat, Add and subtract. I'm dealing with uh, proportion, so I'm going to use a Z. My little Z crit. I have a Z crit. I'll never tell you what it is. A Z crit times the square root of P Q P hat Q hat over N. That's my standard deviation. That's given to me too. So all I have to do is plug stuff in. So um, I can get my P hat for my sample. So you define P hat. Q hat is just one minus P hat. N is my sample size, I sample 60, and um, Z, the Z crit, that's going to be a little tricky, it's going to change for each of my intervals, so we're going to find some Z crits. Let's just find, let's plug everything in except for the Z, and then we'll find the Z crits for the different um, intervals we're going to make. So let's find my P hat, I'm going to take out my trusty TI-82 calculator, and I get uh, you sample 60 and find 47 love circus peanuts. I want to know if 47 of my 60 like circus peanuts, I'm curious about the population because my sample's probably close, so I'm going to make some confidence intervals and try to capture the true P, the parameter, in the population. I really want to know what percent of people like circus peanuts. So, what am I looking at here? 47 over 60. So the P hat I have is 47, my P hat, is 47 over 60, which is 47 divided by 60. 0 0.783333. 0 0.783. When I do 1 minus that answer, 1 minus second negative, a little negative side, I get 0 0.216666. 0.217. There's my 1 minus P hat is my Q hat. It is 0.217. Sweet! I owe my N equals 60. So I just have to plug everything in. Okay, um, one of the cool things that you should probably get used to doing is finding this entire, see this thing right here? I'm going to plug everything, I'm going to show you how to do this in your calculator in one line, so you have to always do it over and over again. But my P hat is 0.783, plus or minus some critical Z, times the standard deviation square root P hat 0.783, Q hat 0.217, all over 60 which is simply 0.783 plus or minus some critical Z, which I'll erase and put a few different numbers, times whatever that thing is. I can do that whole thing in one line. When you hit the square root button on your TI-83, it starts the parentheses. Or if you have a TI-84, it, 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 it shows you the square root, and whatever you type, it puts underneath the radical. So you just put all this stuff in in a straight line. And if you type it in exactly like this, Square root, the parentheses start, or the thing goes, you just type in 0.783, the times button, 0.217, the divide button, 60, and then you can end your parentheses, or you can just hit enter, and I'm going to do it right now, second square root. Um, now the parentheses will always be there. If you're a really old calculator like mine, mine just starts the, doesn't start the parentheses, I actually have to add it in. 0.783 times 0.217 divided by 60 gives me
be a standard error of 0 0.0532. 0 0.0532. 0.05321. Good. Times 0.0532. So there's my standard deviation. I'm going to stand at my p hat, 0.783. That's my sample proportion. And I'm going to say, well, if 78% of my sample like circus peanuts, I'm going to guess the parameter, the true population proportion to be between here and here. I'm going to go down and up some number of standard deviations, a critical number of standard deviations. Now remember, if I want to be 68% confident, I go up and down one standard deviation. If I want to be 95% confident, I go up and down two standard deviations. Let me show you where you get that two number from. Suppose you didn't know how to do it. So I'm going to keep this up here for now. I'm going to erase some stuff. Actually, no, no, I got to erase some stuff. I need room. I can't keep that up for now. But this is where I'm at. Okay. 60 students, 47 love circus peanuts. So I'm going to erase all this stuff so I can use, ooh, damn cloth. Do I have, I've got to be right back. I've got to run to my kitchen and get some uh, paper towels. Back. So, let's figure out how I, we found that too. Remember, a z-crit is a z-score. If you remember the flow chart, how do I get a z-score? Remember, we went from x to z to percent. Well, we have a confidence interval that has a percent. I need to go to z. It's the bottom of the flow chart to go from percent to z. I use inverse norm. Inverse norm, you give it a percentile, it gives you back a z-score. Well, remember, we want to make 95%. We go out two standard deviations. Let's see where that comes from. Well, suppose I want to grab 95% of the p-hats. There's a bunch of p-hats. If I was going to grab 95% of the p-hats, I'd go out about two standard deviations, a z-score of negative 1, negative 2. Here's a z-score of 0, 1, 2. Now, I know that 95% is in there, but suppose I didn't know. Here's how I find 2. I'd say, all right, I want to grab 95% of the p-hats which means I'm not going to grab, if 95% is in here, 10% is out here. And that 10% is here and here. 5% of it's, oh sorry, if 95% if is here, 5% is out there. Oops, 5% is out there. Which means 2.5 is up here and 2.5 is here. The problem is, if I do nor, uh, inverse norm, 0.95, it goes to the 95th percentile and gives me the z-score for the 95th percentile. I don't want the z-score for the 95th percentile. I want the z-score for the place where only two and a half are above. And if I go inverse norm 0.05, it gives me to the 5th percentile. I don't want to know the z-score for the 5th time. I want to know how far out do I have to reach to get to this percentile with only 2.5% below. The percentile that's only, that only 2.5% is to the left of it is the 2.5 percentile. The percentile that only 2.5% is to the right of it is the 97.5 percentile. If I do inverse norm either of those, Two comes out, well, almost two. If I do inverse norm, what comes out? 1.96. Inverse norm, 0.025, I get negative 1.96. Inverse norm, point, uh, sorry, 0.975, I get positive 1.96. So if I'm going to do a 95% confidence interval, you, you pretty much go up and down two. If, if you want to be exact, it's exactly 1.96. When you round it, it's two. If you're going to round it uh, less than, you know, if you're going to round one, uh, well, whatever. So it's about two. So that's why when you go out two, that's why you see a lot of books will use 1.96 instead of two. But it's about two. Okay, just remember that it's about two. So basically, the quick way to do it is this. Inverse norm... Area in one tail. That will always give you your the crit inverse norm, the area in one tail. So let's do a couple confidence intervals. Um, for, let's find the critical values for each of these. I want to do a 90, a 96, and a 99.9. .9, okay? So I'm going to do a 90%. 
We just did 95%. We found the Z was 1.96. We'll do a 96% and a 98% and a 99.9%. And we'll find the Z crit, basically how many standard deviations you have to reach out based on how confident you want to be. Basically, how many, P, what percent of the P hats. Remember, confidence interval though, is standing at some p hat. Just remember, you're standing at some p hat. I don't know which one I'm at, but I'm hoping to grab the true p. So let's just find all the different z crits. Here we go. Um, suppose I want to make a 90% confidence interval. That means I'm grabbing 90%. That means I'm missing 10%. So I grab 90, I'm missing 10%, and that 10% is split into two tails here and here. So this percentile is the 5th percentile, this is the 95th percentile. So if I do inverse norm 0.05 or inverse norm 0.95, it will tell me the number of standard deviations to reach out and grab 90%. In inverse norm, I'll do it right here on my calculator. Um, I'll wait for it to come up. Um, I'll make a little thing here. I'll put a little thing here. Area in one tail. So confidence, area in one tail, and Z, one tail. For a 95, the area in one tail is 0.25. For a 90 in one tail is 0.05. The Z crit is, um, let's see, on, turn this thing on, inverse norm, second, dister, inverse norm is 3.05 is negative 1.644. So if I go down negative 1.64, if I do inverse norm 0.95, it gives me positive 1.64. So I'm going 1.64 standard deviations, okay? Um, notice it gives you a negative because you put in that percentile. If you put the positive one, it would be positive. So if I want a 90% confidence interval, I go out 1.6 standard deviations. If I want a 95, I go out about two standard deviations. Let's see if I do a 96% confidence. Well, how do I find the Z crit? How do I, this is what we're finding now, these Z crits, the number of standard deviations out of the reach. Well, let's do a 96% confidence interval. Well, here we go, quick. I'm grabbing 96. If I'm grabbing 96, I'm missing 4%. If I'm missing 4%, that means two's here, two's here. I'm gonna do inverse norm 0.02, and 2 percent above 0.98. If I do inverse norm either of those, um, it should come out. So let's do it again. Second, dister. Or I can, yes, ready? Do, 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 go to my distribution. I hit three, inverse norm, point nine eight, or whichever one I want to do, point oh two. And I get a standard deviation, the number, a Z score of 2.053. 2.05, 2.05. So if I go up a little, so notice, if I go up 1.96, or about, if I go up two standard deviations, I have a 95% confidence interval. If I go 2.05 a little bit more, I get a 96% confidence interval. I'm grabbing more of those P hats. So this is 2.05.02. If I want to do a 98% confidence interval, well, I need to grab 98%. I'm gonna, I have to figure out, well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I have to imagine where 98% of the P hats are. Okay, so I go 0.98, I'm missing 2%, leaves one in each tail, which means I'm gonna go from the first percentile or to the 99, so I do inverse norm, second dister, second distribution, uh, three, inverse norm, 0.99, oops, I did 99, let me go back, that's not gonna work. Uh, inverse norm, 0.99, will give me the nine, or 0.01, I'll do 0.01. 2.32, negative 2.32, or positive 2.32. To be a little bit more, um, if I want to be a little bit more confident, if I want to be 98, instead of just 90% confident, I want to be 98% confident, I better reach out more. I better get a bigger net to make sure I catch that true P. And then I can say, suppose I want to do a 99.9. Now this is a little tricky, just remember here, if I'm grabbing 99.9, that's .999 which means I'm missing 0 0.001. Half of that 0 0.001 is over there, and half is over there. But half of 0 0.001 
is not 0.005. If half of 0.001 was 0.005, then half of 1 would be 5. Half of 0.001 is 0.005. So make sure you realize 0.005 is there and 0.005. Oh, 5 is there. So I'm going to do inverse mode point oh, 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 5. Second dister, second dister. 3. Point oh, 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 5. I have to say it like that all the time. And I get 3.29. And I get a 3.29. Sorry, pause it. 3.29. So the critical value is 3.29. Oh, 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 5. Okay, the area in one tail. So I just do inverse norm area in one tail. It tells me how many I go up and down. So then how do you do the calculations? You just plug it in. I got 0.0532. So what does it look like? It looks exactly like this. 0.783, which one? Let's just, for, let's just do the 98% for now. Um, for the 98%, I just put the 2.23 here. If I want to do a 99.9, I put the 3.29 there. If I want to do a 9, I put 1.64 there. So there's the secret changes. Notice when I'm going to be 99.9, I've got to reach out over three standard deviations to be sure. You know, because I need 99.9% of my confidence intervals to catch. So I better make sure from, I have to think, I'm standing at some, for some p hats. So from 99.9% .9 of those p hats, if I reach out from 99.9% .9 of p hats, I will grab the true p. So let's just use 98% just for fun. And here we go, I get 0.783 plus or minus 2.32 times the standard deviation of the standard error, 0.0532, which is 0.783 plus or minus this product, which is the margin of error. And the margin of error here is 2.32 times 0 0.0532. 0 0.0532 is 0.1234. Cool. <laughs> 0.1234. So I'm going to do 0.783 plus that is 0 0.906. 0 0.9064 is up top. And 0 0.783 minus 0 0.123 is 0 0.660. Okay. So, I can say, if I took a sample and I wanted to know how many, if I, and I'm trying to figure out how many people, what percent of the population actually do like circus peanuts, I can say that I am 98% confident that between 66 and 90% of people like circus peanuts. That 98% means, not that there's a 98% chance that the true thing's in there, but it just means this. If I made a bunch of intervals, confidence intervals, this way, and I use that Z, and I did this over and over again with the same sample size, I would end up getting 98% of my confidence intervals would capture the true P. Some of my intervals would not. Hopefully that clears up things with P hat and Z crit and all that stuff. Um, your calculator does it all for you, but you need to know how to do it this way. Remember, stand at your P hat, go up and down some critical amount of standard deviations and try to grab, hopefully, hopefully catch the true P.